Hi, and welcome to Loan Officer Team Training. I'm your host, Irene Duford, and I have a really special guest today, and his name is Kenny Duford, and he is my son, and he is a trainer with our company, Loan Team Training, but he is also a mortgage expert or front-end loan partner, and so I want to interview him today and just ask him a few questions so that as a loan officer, you can see the type of person that you would want to hire and maybe uh, get some insight from Kenny today. So welcome, Kenny, to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you here, of course. And Mm -hmm. I am so grateful that you're a trainer with Loan Team Training. It's nice to have somebody that is in the trenches doing the job of a loan partner. And that's Mm -hmm. what that's what we're all about is training loan partners. And we have several different classes, but you train in all of them. But what we're going to talk about today is about you being a loan partner and Mm -hmm. about being a front end loan partner, the one that talks to the clients and converts them on behalf of your loan officers. So tell us, Kenny, how you got into the mortgage business, how you ended up becoming a loan partner. So I was a loan officer for about three years and I found that it was a lot more difficult than I thought it was to make it rain. Obviously, loan officers have a very difficult job, but obviously, you know, you're good at it as a loan officer. If any, if you're going to be successful, you got to be good at making it rain. That wasn't my thing. I thought I would be better at it than I was. I was good at doing loans, though. I just wasn't good at making it rain. So I found myself struggling a little bit. And we were going to move to Michigan because my wife's in dental school up here. And I was like, man, I could start from scratch in Michigan and start to, you know, talk to realtors and do all the making it rain activities up there. Or I, I could I could work for an established loan officer who's got business coming in the door, and I could do what I like doing: talking to clients, pre-approving them, structuring loans, selling loans, doing all that stuff. And so it really just kind of worked out for me that way because I was already feeling the stress of not being able to really make it rain that well. That was just you know it's not my thing. I wasn't great at it, but also it made sense with for me and my family. Um, and I think that. A lot of people in my position are probably feeling the same way. So what is it about being a loan partner uh, as far as compensation goes compared to being on full commission that you like? Well, I mean, when you're on full commission as a loan officer and you're not succeeding in bringing in more business, obviously it's very stressful. You may have months where you don't make any money. And for someone with the fa- as a single guy, it really wasn't that big of a deal for me because I had some good months and I could save and, you know, it really, I didn't have that many expenses. It was fine when I was married though. And when I was getting married, the stress started to hit me a little bit more because now I've got to provide for a family. My wife's not working. She's in dental school. So the concept of, or the idea that I might not have a commission next month because I didn't close any loans was really, really stressful. And so that was weighing on my mind really, really heavily. So being on a hundred percent commission really just wasn't sitting well with me. And I think anybody that you're looking to hire in my position they don't want to be on 100% commission or else why would they be taught? If they wanted to be on 100% commission, they're motivated to go out and get business and they wouldn't want to be on a team under somebody anyways. They'd want to be doing it themselves. Yes. And, you know, as I talk to loan officers, as I'm coaching them, that's the biggest thing for them to, the biggest hurdle for them to get over as far as hiring a loan partner, because they don't think that a loan partner would want to be on a salary. You know, they think as a, salesperson who's always been on commission, it's just normal to them to think that everybody would want to be on commission. But but it's not that way. There's plenty of people like you that are amazing at being a loan partner, not having to go make it rain, but they take great care of them when they come in. They have the knowledge, they have the ability, but they don't want to be on commission. And so yeah. I'm glad you addressed that today because that's a big obstacle. It's a hurdle for loan officers to think that there are people like you out there not you, of course, because you already have a great person right. that you work for, but other people that are like you that maybe don't want to go make it rain. So what's yeah. attractive about that besides obviously you, is it the steadiness? Is it, what is it about it? Yeah, it's 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 the pressure of like, I don't have to, of course, I have roles on my team. Like I need to be asking for business and I need to do things to help the team out just like anybody on your team would be doing, not just someone like me, but the sole responsibility of whether or not the team succeeds or whether or not I succeed is not on me. I don't want that responsibility. That responsibility is very stressful. And it was not, it was, it was just stressing me out. Right. So the most attractive thing to me was I don't have to be responsible for bringing in business. I'm not responsible for how many loans we close that month. I have to close the loans that come in and I have to do those very, very well. 
but that's what I'm good at. And that's what I enjoy doing anyway. When you can do things that you enjoy doing, you're going to be happier. If I was responsible yes. for doing that and also going to get business, what what was happening was I was always deferring to focusing on my loans and making sure they were really taken care of. And I was ignoring the money-making activities because I liked doing the loan stuff. I didn't like that. So I wasn't doing it. So what was appealing to me was just not having the stress of having to, to build the business and to, to make it rain. Okay, good. Compensation wise, what's important for a loan officer to know about hiring a loan partner, not what you make or anything, but do you have a fair compensation package? Is, does Absolutely. that matter? Somebody that has the qualities that you're looking for, that knows what they're doing, can talk to clients, they can sell, they can talk really, really well, they can convert your clients. They have the skills of a loan officer. So like we know our worth, right? We're not gonna we're not gonna work for nothing. We don't want to be on a hundred percent commission, but we need to have a fair compensation package or you know what? Like you can make a decent amount of money closing one to two loans a month as a loan officer. Mm -hmm. If I'm not making that or more, whatever that is, right, and without going into specific numbers, why would I want to to make less, right? Like, it, it, so it has to be a fair compensation package, obviously, if uh, if you're going to be hiring this specific role, because this specific role, the person you're hiring is going to have a sense of pride, and they're going to know what they're worth. Yes, because not if that you, others they... don't. It's just that we might think a little bit more highly of ourselves than others because we have those skills up front to convert. Yes. And it's a special skill. It's not something that's that easy to come by. I mean, you have to have the experience to be able to convert. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to be a salesperson, right? Like your your processors and your back end loan partners are not salespeople, right? They don't have that sales people that salesperson skill. And I think that anybody that does have the skills of a good salesperson is going to be a little bit prideful, and they're going to tend to, I don't want to say demand a little bit more, but they're going to know what they're worth. Yeah, they're going to know what they're worth. And the the contract to close loan partners and the processors and the underwriters, they're all amazing. They're amazing yeah. at their role. It's just that they're not the salespeople that you kind of have to be a salesperson to be in your role. Yeah. I mean, how would you, how else would you convert clients, right? The whole purpose of somebody like me is so that the loan officer can step away from talking to clients up front and focus on money-making activities for the business. If the loan officer isn't stepping away, then- Hiring somebody like me really isn't going to benefit them that much because if they're not going to actually do the activities to grow, it's just going to be a, an expense, not a profit center. We can exactly. become a profit center if the if the loan officers are doing their job and making the business grow, but yes. they have to be able to step away completely to do that. Yes. And that's the key right there is a lot of loan officers will hire someone, but then they have a hard time trusting them. So tell us from the perspective of a loan partner, of a, of a mortgage expert, loan partner, converter the one that actually does the loan consultations for the loan officer. Tell us from your perspective, why they should trust you to do that, that role, how, why they should trust their loan partner to do that role. How do you show your loan officer that you can be trusted? Well, I think that, you know, we're talking about being hands-off and, and just going out and getting more business. I do think that when you're hiring this role, there needs to be probably a one to two month period where you are listening to your loan partner. They're listening to you sell for a little bit. There needs to be a little bit of hands-on training. It doesn't need to take away a lot of your time as a loan officer. You know, whenever you're talking to a client, they can jump on with you. Whenever they're talking to a client, you can jump on the phone with them and just kind of listen in, mute yourself as a third party. Or you can just simply record calls and watch it not during business hours, right? Mm -hmm. Like they can listen to you talk. You can uh, listen to them talk. There has to be you can't just like give your business away to somebody that you don't know or trust, even if they have incredible experience because you, it's your business, right? You have to know the way they're selling and be comfortable with it. And they need to know how you sell so that they can do business the way that you've always done it, right? It, it's it's really important. So, you know, th there's got to be that little initial period where I think a lot of trust is built. Mm -hmm. For me personally, my loan officer, we did exactly that. I listened to him talk to clients for a couple of weeks. He listened to me talk to clients for a couple of weeks. There was a lot of analyzing what went well, what didn't go well. Here's how we handle certain situations. And that lasted for about a month, month and a half. And then I was off on my own, right? But because the loan officer was able to see me in action and listen to me and see what I was learning and see me implement things he wanted me to implement, that trust was just there. 
Yes. I think you'd be a fool to just immediately give trust to somebody like that. When you're giving up the, you're not talking to clients anymore, you're giving that part of the role up, you've got to kind of have that little initial trial period. And that might go against what we're talking about building freedom. But after that little trial period, which really you're not doing hours and hours of training a day with them, you're just kind of listening to them. They're listening to you. It's things that you'd already be doing. Because if you don't have somebody like me on your team, you're already talking to clients anyway. Yeah. Now they listen in. You're not you're not adding time to your plate by having them listen in Mm -hmm. or by having, hey, you take this client, you know, you have your loan partner listen to him and then you listen in. It's not adding any time to your day, but it is a little bit of hands on. And I think that that little trial period, the hands on almost trial period, but that period where you're learning how the other person works and, and showing them how you want them to sell. That's what that's where the trust is built, I think. Yes. What I love about the way Paul did it with you, he took the time, which is what a lot of loan officers do not do. Like you said, you're not, we're not asking a loan officer to train the person, no. to train the loan partner because they're, they're already they're trained. Yeah. Yeah. They're already, they already know how to do the loan part of it. And, and yeah, there may be some times where you have to go to your loan officer and say, I'm not sure about this, you know, but, yeah. you, but you have a way to do it. So when you do that with Paul, tell me, how do you, like, say you have a, a loan that you're not sure about. What's the process that you guys, or let's say at the beginning, when they first hired you, what was the process when you had a question? Did you go right to Paul? Did you look up guidelines? What You know how we teach yeah. in our class what they yeah. should be doing. Anybody that you hire should absolutely be trying to find the answer on their own, right? And if they don't have that answer or can't find it, then there may be somebody else on your team that you want them going to. So it, it depends on the the problem or what I need to go to Paul about. If it's a structuring issue, Paul is the only person on my team that I can go to because, mm-hmm. you know, the, the back end loan, pro- the back end loan partners and the processors aren't going to be able to answer my questions on structuring. It's pretty, pretty rare that I have to go to Paul with questions like that. But if it's something like that, then yes, I need to be able to get Paul involved and uh, he's busy, right? He's doing a lot of things to help the business grow, but I have an open line with him. Whereas if I say I need him, he, t- he prioritizes that. And he knows mm-hmm. that he needs to get back to me. And I think that's important as well. It is. There are just some things as a loan partner that you can't make decisions on one or two. Paul, Paul's a mortgage genius. So I can go to him for a lot of complicated stuff in your business. You may not have that much complicated stuff and your loan partner might not need to reach out about stuff, but it just mm-hmm. depends. And so at the beginning, when you first started working for Paul, which was how long ago now? Has it been three? Has it 2019, been? So May, 2019, I believe. Yeah. So it's been a few years. And yep. when you first started, it was a little bit of a transition, right? He was making a transition, hiring you. Mm-hmm. You were making a transition, doing the job. And so he took time. And that's so important. Like I said, they don't have to spend hours and hours training, yeah. but they do have to take time to to for you to have heard his voice, how he talks to people, how he structures things, how the system works among your on your team, all of that stuff. And I think that's important. Yeah. For people to understand when they're first bringing somebody on, they can't just throw them in. It's not sink or swim, right? You do have to spend a little bit of time because freedom isn't free. That's the thing. It's not free. You have to spend a little bit of time as a loan officer with your loan partner to to get them used to how you do things. And if you do things the same way every time and you have structure, it's going to make a big difference. Right. Well, again, that little period of where you're you're working with them to to learn all those things and learn how you sell and learn your structures and systems, that's where the trust is built. Again, as a loan officer looking to hire this position, it's I would imagine it's probably kind of stressful to give that part of it up because you know that the converting aspect of it, if if your if your loan partner can't convert loans, you no longer are going to have a business, right? Right. So you know, that trust has to be built and uh that's where you can get the trust as a loan officer in them. Or, you know, that's the period where you're going to say, hey, I've made a mistake in hiring this person. I need to find someone else, right? Sometimes that may happen. It Hopefully may. it doesn't, but it may. And mm-hmm. that period, you know, you'd rather catch on to it quickly because you're working with them and listening versus finding out a month and a half to two months later that now your realtors hate working with your team because they don't like this guy mm-hmm. or this girl. You know, it's yes. just, you need to be able to kind of monitor it for that first couple months, I think. Let's talk a little bit about what we talk about in the training. When we are teaching either wow training or we're teaching client conversion training, we teach them to do such a great job that the loan officer can't stand the thought of them not working with them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so how do you do that? Like as a loan partner, looking at it from your perspective, 
what are the ways that you make yourself really valuable to Paul and to the to his team? Mm, I, I I convert deals and make sure deals are getting sold without him getting involved. Right. The most the way that I can be the most valuable is not taking away from his time at all. Right. I don't demand go. anything on his time because he needs to be out there selling. As soon as I have a question and he has to get involved, that's the time that he is no longer selling or growing the business. So that's where I provide the most value is that he doesn't need to get involved because he trusts me to handle everything. Okay. That's great. I, think, I mean, obviously there's other things we can do. You know, we can ask for business. We can, you know, I was a loan officer, so I know some people and I, I had past clients before that I can use to to kind of bring in some more referrals to our team. But the the main value of a person like me should be they give you freedom. And yes. that is why, you know, you, they can't stand the thought of you not working with them because if you're gone, then the freedom is gone. Mm-hmm. You being the loan partner in this case. Mm-hmm. So what is it that you enjoy about being a loan partner, a front end loan partner, the one that does the conversions? What, what part of that do you really enjoy? I mean, I know you enjoy the whole job because I know you're happy in your job, but what part do you really just really enjoy? I like talking to people. I like working with people. I like being able to help them along the journey. I like, I know that there's a lot of really, really bad, not great loan officers and loan teams out there that don't do a good job for their clients and clients are going through this, you know, really stressful experience without proper guidance. So I like being the person that can actually give them the guidance and make sure that they have a smooth experience versus a bad one. Sounds kind of corny, but like, I really enjoy that. I don't, I don't like the thought that people are going through this stressful experience without guidance or with bad guidance. And now you're going to, you're about to buy your second home, right? Mm -hmm. You're about to buy another home. And now seeing it as a homeowner or a home buyer, it really makes your eyes open up, doesn't it? Yeah. You just find out like, it's a really stressful process. Just even if the, even if the deal is smooth as a home buyer, it's fairly stressful because you're worried about, oh my gosh, the inspection, the appraisal, is it going to come back? Okay. You know, all these things. Mm -hmm. It's just a stressful process naturally. Yeah. So it helps to to have the, the other side of it, to know what it's like to be a buyer. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's so. really important. Yeah. So tell us about systems and processes. How important are doing things the same way every time, having a process? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that this is something where if you're hiring somebody like me, if you don't have a good system or process in place, like a file flow, you know, making sure that team members' roles are very, very clearly defined, I don't think a person like me would want to be on that team if it's disorganized, or at least if you're in the process of getting organized, that's fine. But somebody like me needs to know that everybody has defined roles because it really is important when roles aren't clearly defined. It can cause a lot of stress on the process. And it's like, oh, I thought this person was doing that. I was supposed to do this. It just causes frustration. So one of the most appealing things to me when I was looking for my job was, wow, these people have their systems in place, right? Everybody knows their role on the team. I have a very specific role. I know exactly what I'm going to be doing and I can just focus on that and not have to worry about anybody else. That's super important. Again, you don't have to have your systems be flawless to hire somebody like me, but somebody like me is going to be curious on how the file flow works and and stuff like that. So you need to show them that you're at least in the process of building good systems. Having a good system and doing things the same way every time is what makes us be able to take such good care of their clients. Nothing is lost because everybody knows exactly what is supposed to everybody knows exactly what the role is and what they're supposed to be doing. So there's nothing, there's no part of the loan process that's ever missed. Yes. What is a routine or a habit in your job that you do daily that helps you stay organized and stay on top of things and really deliver an amazing experience and convert people really well every day? Well, going back to systems, our Uh, We have a really, really good CRM that lets me know exactly what I need to be doing every day. So I have a list of people I need to call. I have exactly what my next steps are because I I put them in there last time I contacted them. So I know exactly who I'm supposed to be reaching out to on a daily basis and what I'm supposed to be doing. But sometimes, obviously, there are some clients that have a higher priority than others. And those people I literally write on a post-it note, you know, my my main goals and main priorities for the day are written on a post-it note. (laughs) The, the, at the end of or the, a piece of paper day. or a, a yeah, list. Yeah, no, like it's literally a post-it note on my computer, yeah. my computer right over here. And this is my post-it note. These are the main priorities for tomorrow. Before uh-huh. I start to follow up on all of the other leads, these are the things that are going to get done. Right. So, so no matter what those three things get done. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just what I do to stay organized. I'm sure there's, there's better ways out there. I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but those are how I make sure that the highest priorities are taken care of first. Obviously everything is important and everything gets done, but 
you know, these are the people that really, really need uh, assistance first. Great. Is there anything that you want to share about the team that you're on that you really um, appreciate as a loan partner? I appreciate one that I have an open line to Paul if I need it. He he makes the time, even though he's really busy. If I do need assistance as, as the person who's handling the front end, like me, sometimes the loan officer is just needed. Sometimes I could be doing my job 100% perfectly and the loan officer is needed. And if he's not available, it's very frustrating, right? Because I'm the one that has to answer to these clients, to these realtors. I'm the face of it, right? So if I don't have an answer for them because the loan officer is taking his sweet time to get back to me, it's frustrating. So that doesn't happen on my team. Paul's very, very good at prioritizing me when I need him. I like that. I like the fact that everybody has very, very defined roles. So they're nothing is missed. There's no like, well, I thought you were doing this. Oh no, you were supposed to do this. It's like, if someone doesn't do something, we can go back to their job description and say, well, actually this is a role you're supposed to be doing. I like the fact that we have team meetings. There's, there's good team synergy because, you know, we meet, we talk to each other, we go through pipeline stuff. And then I like the fact that they take the time every two weeks to do one-on-ones with each of the team members, talking about the role, what's new, what's happening, what could be done better, what they're focusing on. So I think that's big too. I think that's really big. I'm really, I'm really glad that they do that. That's a really big key takeaway for loan officers today is take time to do one-on-ones. Don't get so busy and so crazy in your work. When I say crazy, I mean crazy busy that you don't prioritize taking care of your team members. Because that, yeah. that shows that they care about you. It shows that they're invested in you as a team member. I think that's a big one. People that are good at their job know their worth. And if they're not being taken care of, right, it's going to cause cause a rift. It's going to cause a little bit of a division. Like, take care of good people if you've got them. Yes. Yep. I'm sure you've had people, on. if you're listening to this, I'm sure you've had people on your team in the past that weren't great, right? So mm-hmm. appreciate when you do have good people. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't take that much time to do, right? No. It doesn't, but it makes them feel appreciated because you're taking time yeah, absolutely. for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of the things that I see a lot with loan officers is they don't take that time. And that's one of the things that I'm always telling them is make sure you are taking time. It doesn't have to be a lot, mm-hmm. but especially if you're virtual, if yep. you're, and most teams are, a lot of teams are virtual today. And yep. so tell us how the Dolan team works with virtual with everything being virtual because they're completely virtual. There's nobody yeah. Yeah, in an office, an office working together. So I mean, tell us how nowadays that works. it's so, it's so easy. You've got Microsoft teams. That's just makes it easy to communicate with everybody. We use that most of the time we have set zoom calls and, and, and team meetings and stuff like that that are set. So with really video, nowadays, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. no, not, not often on video. If it's going to be a sales, cause I'm, I'm in the sales meetings too, with other loan officers on our team, because my job is kind of sales, but I'm also technically ops because I'm a loan partner. So I'm, I'm, I'm on both ops. Doesn't usually have their cameras on just because that's part of the perks of working from home is you don't have to get ready every day. It would be great if you guys did camera, that's fine too, but I'll be on sales. Yeah. Everybody's usually on camera because those are the people that don't really care. Yeah. And one thing I like about the Dolan team is they're always doing fun things with the Mm -hmm. team members, right? Don't like, tell us some of the little fun things that you, that they do not only to show appreciation to you, but to keep that synergy going on the team, you know, making sure there's synergy. Yeah. Just two, when was Mardi Gras two, three weeks ago, Mm -hmm. we had a, we had a a zoom meeting with every single member of the team where they, they ended work early, like an hour. And we had a, a Mardi Gras party where previously they sent us each in the mail, like, fun things like little coins. It was like a bingo card. We played like Mardi Gras bingo. There was like drink recipes um, for for non-alcoholic or alcoholic drinks that people could make and have while we're on the call together. So they sent they sent us out things to to have before the party that we can use on the party. It was kind of cool. We did that for Mardi Gras. We did one for Christmas too, which was really cool. So they, they do fun things like that where they get everybody together and they're really thoughtful with sending stuff out. It's just, it's good. That yeah. creates the synergy that you miss sometimes being able to visit by the water cooler, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Because like, we never get that. Like, because we're all focused on our jobs, right? When we have pipeline meetings, we just want to get the pipeline meeting over with and talk about it and get it over with. We're not sitting there asking about each other's days and lives because we're all focused on getting the job done. So that like helps us, you know, we're not working during that time. We're fully focused on just, just chatting, having a good time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So tell me one more thing that is going to help loan officers and loan partners listening to this. And that is, what is a book that you've read that has really had an impact on you? Just personally, has had it's helped you have a success mindset or helped you get along with people better, 
you know, get to know, uh, be, connect with people better, mm -hmm. anything like that. Oh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, without question. If you've never read that book, you need to read it. It'll change your life. But I, I can really attribute everything I've learned about connecting with people to that book. I was I was okay at it before, like I had friends and stuff, but I just wasn't the type of person that could talk to anybody and have a good time with them. Whereas like now, it doesn't really matter who they are. I could talk to anybody and they could have a good time with me and I could have a good time with them. I enjoy their company. They enjoy mine. Even if they're not people that I have really have that much in common with, I can still enjoy their company and they can enjoy mine because of the things that are taught in that book. The book, I don't know why, a lot of people have this concept, if they haven't read it, they have this concept, uh, misperception that Oh, it's it's manipulative. It's how to win friends and influence people, right? It almost sounds like that, but really the book is like the, the the main concept is hey, take an interest in people and they'll take an interest in you, right? That's one of the main principles taught in the book. You actually have to be interested in people for them to like you. And if you like people, they'll like you. Obviously, there's more to the book than that, but that's the main concept. So for me and yes. someone in my role, like I think that book's a must. And a personal little note note here that I love sharing with people is the fact that I remember when you were in grade school. You had friends that read a lot. Your your three, the three amigos, the, I used to call them, used to read a lot of books and all three of you are successful today, but you shared a lot of that. But what we did is we gave you that little carrot. We said, okay, in the summertime, if you read this many books, you know, here's some books to read. And that was one of them. How old were you when you read that? 10? I can't remember. I think I was in junior high or something like that. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. 10, 12, something like that. Offered me money like and that. I read it. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we paid you to read it, right? And believe yeah, me. Yeah, and I'm glad you did. Yeah, there's got to be some sort of incentive if you're trying to get a teenager or a young kid to read the book like that. Yes, yep. The other one was what to say when you talk to yourself, right? About self-talk. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. And you've reread those, obviously, since you were a yeah, kid. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, and you've studied them and read them. But yeah, I'm so I mean, grateful that's... that we that we incentivized you that way. And I should have known then that you were incentivized with things like that. Yeah. <laughs> so... I appreciate you being here with us and I'm so excited, Kenny, for you because um, I'm proud of you and I'm excited for your team and I'm excited that you're on a great team. I'm grateful to Paul for taking the time because there were things that he needed to train you on, right? Not massive training, but enough training where you got to know his voice and you've always said that you've learned a lot from him. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, and so I just think it's so great that He's gotten you as a loan partner and that you're part of their team because they're amazing. If you have a parting word of wisdom for us, for at, let's just say from a loan officer's perspective, let's give them a parting word of wisdom when hiring a loan partner. What's one little thing about hiring the right loan partner? I would say, obviously, experience is important, but I think what's more important for this role yeah. You have to have experience, right? Don't hire this role if they don't have any experience. Just don't do it. Or if their experience sucks and you test them and they don't know that much, don't hire them. Right. But you're going to find a lot of people with a lot of really good experience and low knowledge that just do not have the personality for this job. They've got to have the personality. They've got to be good salespeople. And you, that should be evident when you chat with them in an interview if they're good. If They need to be talkers, right? Like yes. if they're not talkers, this role is going to be very, very difficult for them. Mm-hmm. Because all the other stuff connect. can be exactly all the other stuff can be learned, right? If they aren't the most incredible people at converting because they don't have all the knowledge in the world about different loan structures and stuff like that, you can work with them on that, right? Mm -hmm. It's important for them to have the personality while also, you know, Paul didn't have to teach me any sort of guidelines or he didn't have to teach me basic loan knowledge that I was already supposed to know. I already had a basic knowledge of how to structure loans well. So that's obviously a prerequisite, but don't hire. If I had somebody who, you know, was like me that had a, a good solid grasp of things, but they had a great personality for it versus somebody who has an incredible grasp of loan knowledge and structuring, but they don't really have the best personality or their bedside manner really isn't all that great. They're not warm. I would go with the person that has the better personality all day long. Mm -hmm. You can, heck, we're going to plug our training in a few minutes, client conversion training. You can send them to the client conversion training to get better at converting loans. That's that's yes. what we do in this training company. You can't teach personality. Right. But you can teach how to convert. And, and so you got someone with a great personality. You can teach them how to convert better by using systems and doing yeah. things the same way every time. And, and so yeah. tell us, tell us a little bit about that training. Well, hold on one sec. Before we'll go, just going back to personality really quickly. I'm not talking about 
you know, the like the most, like they're just so good at selling, right? I, I, I'm more talking about they're good with people, right? Going back to how to win friends and influence people. They know how to make people feel good. They know how to show appreciation. They're good at talking. They're eloquent, stuff like that, I think. I just wanted to clarify that really quickly. This person is going to be talking to all of your clients and all of your referral partners, ideally. You need to make sure that they're likable, I guess. Yes, yes. They have that's to be good. likable. Mm-hmm. That's a great way to describe it. They have right. to be likable because they're representing you. Yes. It's your name that they're putting everything to. I, I pride myself on being able to get along with anybody. Like, mm-hmm. I don't really know if there's anybody that dislikes me because I mm-hmm. genuinely don't think it's possible to dislike me if you've talked to me. And that's not prideful. That's just me knowing that I take an interest in people and I show an interest in people. And naturally, that makes people like me when I talk to them. So yeah, you've got to have a likable person who it's kind of hard to dislike them. And I think if you're in an interview and they make you feel good during the interview, it's probably a good sign. Yes. So, anyways, about about the client conversion training, which again, if you're hiring somebody for this role, you should 100% just send them to this training, no matter what their experience is, because we dive deep into how to increase your conversion percentage. There's a lot of there's a lot of easy clients that you're going to get that really, you know, as long as you do a good job, they're going to work with you and that's fine. But there's a lot of leads that you get you know, each year, each, each week, month, whatever, that, you know, you've got to do a little bit of work to convince them to work with you versus the thousands of other loan officers that they could be working with. What's going to convince them to work with you instead of going with the big online lender that has a way better rate than you, right? What's going to convince them to work with you when they were given a list of five lenders to call by your favorite, by their favorite realtor, right? Why would they work with you instead of everyone else? That's what we dive into in the class. And we go heavy into it. We basically hit every aspect of it. We hit the mindset aspect, building confidence. We talk about emotional intelligence. We talk about how to build rapport quickly within the first couple of conversations. Uh, we teach a ton of dialogues and scripts for certain situations, how to how to work with rate shoppers, how to have an incredible initial loan consultation. We talk about certain specific mortgage strategies so that we can add value and be creative and be seen as trusted advisors versus just order takers or, you know, mortgage salesmen like everyone else. So we dive deep into a lot of aspects of it. I think when people talk about conversion, they just focus on like, oh, what scripts and dialogues can I use to work against rate shoppers, right? But there's so much more to it than that. If somebody is going to work with your team, you need to be seen as a trusted advisor. And so that's really the main goal of the class is how do we help our clients see that they can trust us and that we're going to bring them value? Yes. Yep. And, so. and really connection. Also, we teach a lot mm-hmm. about yeah. how to connect with yep. them. Like you said, to be a trusted advisor. So, right. You, you get, you get tops three conversations before a client's going to decide whether or not they want to work with you. Sometimes only one, sometimes two, you know, if you're lucky, you might get three before they actually decide if they're going to want to work with you or somebody else. So you've got to be able to build rapport quickly. There are very specific ways that we can do that. And that we teach in the class. It's just, you've got to knock it out of the park on those first two or three conversations with them. And that's, that's how we, that's what we teach people how to do is how to knock those conversations out of the park and how we can really bring value and convince them to work with us versus everyone else. Mm -hmm. So our next client conversion training is next month in April. And if you go to loanteamtraining.com, you'll be able to find under client conversion training, you'll be able to find the dates. We do a two and a half hour day, a two and a half hour virtual live training with us on the training. So Kenny teaches the class, I teach the class, and we work together in tandem to teach. And it's very interactive. And your loan partners, you know, the thing about your loan partners, for those of you loan officers listening, is the loan officers get to go to a lot of events and they get to connect with people and that. Loan partners don't always get that opportunity, but on this virtual training class that's live, they have that opportunity to talk to other people that are in their role and talk to us as trainers and hear from us things that maybe their loan officer already told them, but they're hearing it from us now, uh, from a trainer, so to speak. It's a it's a different situation. Mm-hmm. So that is on loanteamtraining.com. You'll be able to see when the next classes are. We have actually three classes. And so you can look and see different topics. And and if you'd like to talk to the to the trainers and see if one of the classes or another is a better fit for you. You can go to talktothetrainers.com and schedule a, a time to talk and chat and see which class is the best one for you. Yep. So definitely. thank you, Kenny, for being here today. I appreciate you. Me. And I appreciate all you do in the training. You're an excellent trainer. And I know you're an excellent loan partner as well and a mortgage expert. And so if you enjoyed this podcast today, 
please share it with other loan officers that you know. And if you got value out of it, we really appreciate a five-star review here, wherever you listen to podcasts. So thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. And reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks, Enjoy everybody. your day.